That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the coolest Santa in the town is here. Ho, ho, ho. That's right, welcome to the Christmas spirit of the KRS channel. As you can see, I decked out this entire house. I mean, you can see my house, like literally three miles away from the freeway. I mean, everybody's checking it out. Everybody, I mean, talk about celebrities. They're all like, damn, this guy did a fine job. I wonder who could that be? Hello? Oh yes, um, yes, that 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 that's my house. That those are my lights. Oh, 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 you got a problem with them, brother? You want to take this outside? I just meet you at the Merkin Bar right now, dog. Oh, Mike. Hey, hey, Mike. Oh, Tyson. Um, Mike. Um, look, 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 look. I, 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 I'll make my, I'll, 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 tur I'll t tune down the decorations. Okay. No, no, no need to come here. Nice champion, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll tune it down. I, I, I won't do it. No, 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 I'm sorry. Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? So today we are gonna be doing fourth lord in the ninth house and what happens when planet that controls your fourth house goes into the ninth house in your horoscope. I, I kind of look like Gandalf with this. Run, you fools. You shall not pass. He thinks I'm a complete idiot, but yeah. So, fourth lord in the ninth house. And by the way, if you want to know where your fourth lord is placed and what house it's in for that, check out the links here and check out my books and my full astrological report, including the new option six on my website, which I officially haven't announced yet because I'm still testing it out. So while it's up, Check it out, the option six on my website. You'll see what it is. So fourth house is your conveniency. It's your home. It's your mother's nourishment. It's people of your homelands. It's the people that psychologically make you feel good. It's things that make you feel at peace, like home, car, your mom, okay? And it just it's always a pleasure to go to your own homeland. And unless you were kicked out of there, it's really a pleasure to go there and, you know, uh, mingle with the people of your childhood and things like that. So when this goes into the ninth house, well, what is ninth house? Ninth house is a house of long distance travel. It's a house of foreign culture, foreign things. It's a house of higher learning. It's a house of pilgrimage. It's a house of distant lands like the 12th house. But ninth house always signifies a person going and coming back. So what this shows is that your ability to go out and experience culture, go out and experience higher philosophical knowledge, philosophical discussions, you know, meeting gurus, where really this part of you was really impacted through your home. Because of the fact you had such profound religious activities in the home, especially your mother being very religious and very spiritual, it kind of gave you the sense of, hey, I can explore other cultures and other religions and other things out there that are probably close to my own. So what this happens is that your psychological mind that your mother has developed for you, your comfort really comes from being open-minded to other cultures, really comes from open-minded to your teachers. Your mother was your teacher. Mother was your definitely your main teacher. She was the one who was there teaching you all kinds of religious things, all kinds of, you know, rituals of the, of your religion, no matter what religion it is. And literally the interaction you had with your teachers, they were like mother figures to you. No matter if it's a, a male or a female, because it's fourth house represents a very nourishing energy. So your teachers that you met in your life were very nourishing. You feel this optimism, you know, but one thing this also signifies is loving, uh, living far away from home because of the fact it's, it's, it represents distant lands. It represents going somewhere on a pilgrimage. So usually people leave their home for studies. People leave their mother because they're going to school somewhere. Whether you can even be in high school, you might be in India, they have boarding schools. People go to military board, boarding schools in India and they leave their home, their mother, and they go and experience different things. But this is really about exploring other lands, exploring other 
places, other homes. You may have a home in foreign lands. You may have home in a far distance from home. It doesn't have to be a foreign land. You can be in Kashmir and you can have a house in Madras, completely opposite, yet same country. That's considered ninth house things, okay? But when different planets rule this house, when they go into the ninth house, they bring a something extra with them. They, they mold some of those things and they present it in their own manner. So let's discuss when with each planet there. Let's say sun controls your fourth house and sun goes into the ninth house. What this shows, because sun is your ego, sun is your personality, sun is your inner vitality, sun represents your career, your father, government. And one thing you got to notice with this placement is that now the fourth lord is six places away from itself. It's sixth from itself, meaning it is activating the energy of the sixth house, which is conflicts, which is deaths, which is obstacles, enemies. And so what this shows is that you had a lot of ego battles with your father. Like you just couldn't stand the fact your father was so strict on you and he said, do this, this and this. And your father must have worked for government of your homeland because homeland, ninth house law also represents a little bit of government because of implementation of the law. So your father could have worked for the government, was a very strict military guy perhaps. And you just learn, ran into these ego battles with him because especially Sun is in the sign of Capricorn here, okay? And your, but, but your personality is just as tough as your dad, just as tough as your father, you know? And your personality is really developed with people, interacting with people of different culture, interacting with, with teachers and guru at an early age. You know, no matter if it's regular teachers or your spiritual teachers or anybody you considered a teacher, whether it's from streets or not, you know, some people's uncles and aunts or teachers and they always are involved with them shows a very manly, you know, authoritarian type figure who is your teacher and your mother also had this profound leadership uh, qualities in terms of her spiritual circle. Like if your mom went to a temple, everybody respected her like, wow, she's here, you know. So that happens. Like if moon goes there, moon will really do well. Even if it's six from itself, your mom will be this healing personality upon you. Because sixth place from itself, it's also healing, healing other people. So your mom just heals you with her spiritual stories. Your mom heals you with her philosophical discussions. And you just feel that your mom could be the best teacher in the world. And your mind, which is the moon, is always into these things. It's always into traveling. It's always into, you know, experiencing the things of your home with other cultures. Let's say Mercury controls your fourth house and Mercury goes into the ninth house. What this shows, what is Mercury? Mercury is your analytical thinking, your, your logical intelligence, not your pure intelligence, your logical intelligence, your speech, your business skills, your managerial skills, your education, writing. You know, a lot of things are represented by this. And what this shows is that a person is usually is grown up in a family and in an environment where education of the occult was very profound, where perhaps you were born into a pagan culture, you were born into some mystical, you know, Scientology culture where your intelligence was really shaped about looking deep into beneath the earth in the secrets of this world and using that as your spiritual guidance, using that as your profound knowledge to guide you and to, and that is becomes your sense of comfort because fourth house is comfort. So your comfort comes from learning and preaching and talking about deep mystical spiritual subjects. You can't just talk about like Bible or church or Bible or Bhagavad Gita. You want to talk about, hey, who wrote the Bible? Oh, it's these people who wrote the Bible because of these reasons. You got to get into this whole, you know, conspiracy theorist type of thing. It may be true, but you just want to go deep, deep into the religious thing. You may become like a scholar or a, you may get a master's degree in theology to really understand the depth of religion and other cultures and society. So anthropologist can happen with, with this Mercurian place in, uh, in the ninth house. Let's say Venus controls your fourth house, goes into the ninth house, really shows that your sense of comfort and ability to form relationships, because Venus is really relationships, huh? how you love other people. You just have this great attraction towards people of other culture especially your love interest. Whether you're a man or woman, you will fall in love with people of different culture and different backgrounds. 
you'll feel like by me expanding my hand to other cultures, I'm able to learn more about what? Love. And through that love, I will find comfort. And this is one of the a very beautiful place where you're, you will interact with a lot of women in your life who will teach you a lot of things. Whether if it's a relationship or not, any woman that will come across you will teach you something. And, in, and at one point in your life, you'll be like, you know, I've learned a lot through my relationships. And especially for a man, your wife, you will meet your wife in a distant land. You will be introduced to your wife when you're on some journey, some trip, or maybe you came for a temporary visa in a different country and you met her. So it'll happen in a distant land, okay? And Venus is obviously your comfort. It's a significator of cars and vehicles. And here, Venus gives you tremendous luck regarding these things. Even though it's sixth from itself, certain planets, you gotta understand, even when they're sixth from themselves, if in, in originality, it's in the Tricone house, the most powerful Tricone house. So what it shows is that you may think that vehicles and all these things are obstacles in your life. You're like, I don't need them. I just want a plane ticket and I want to go. But this gives a lot of luck towards you having vehicles, you having luck with conveniency, with a beautiful home. You'll have a beautiful home in a foreign land. And that's what you would want to do. You want to marry somebody in Italy while you you're, were born in India. You want to go stay in Italy and get a home there and marry somebody there. And that's your, uh, that's your spirituality. That's your you know, sense of philosophical comfort by interacting with people of other uh, religion and culture. Let's say Mars controls your fourth house. Mars goes into the um, ninth house. What this shows is that you had a lot of power struggles with your teachers. You had a lot of power struggles with the teachings of your mother and father. Because not only it's considered the teachings of your father, but now Mars is ruling your fourth house of mother and her conveniency. And it shows that you were perhaps separated early on in life from your mother. And you feel that you do not need to learn. You need to teach others. Like you want to become this coach, this life coach, this coach who provides this comfort, this like motivational speaker who can speak philosophically, but at the same time, he can, you know, be very strict and be very headstrong. And he says, no, this is my belief. This is how I'm going to follow. And so these people, these people's sense of comfort and conveniency actually comes from being the actual profound teacher. Because Mars is a soldier. He doesn't want to listen to anybody except the king. And in the ninth house, you will try to learn, obviously, engineering, higher learning of regarding mechanical studies. But your true core belief system of the fourth house will be like, I know how things are. You don't need to tell me. And that's where you may run into some trouble because you're truly not relearning the real philosophical truth of life unless Jupiter is impacting your ninth house with Mars or Jupiter is in the ninth house. Because Jupiter is a true divine teaching. You know, it's not comfort of love and sex and marriage and relationship or, you know, your mother or father even. It's really Jupiter. So let's say if Jupiter controls your, uh, for, uh, your fourth house and Jupiter goes into the ninth house, what this shows is that your sense of comfort really came from when you were interacting with your mother because your mother was like your teacher, your guru, once again. And from the, uh, and from, uh, the ninth house, remember, Jupiter also aspects your ascendant. So you become this absolute um, body of, you know, philosophical library. You provide comfort to others, not only yourself. Because now your personality and your life, your ascendant, is being influenced by Jupiter in the ninth house. So you become this teacher of philosophy, what your mom taught you. You always talk about, my mom did this, my mom did that, you know, this happened with my mom. And people of your homeland are these really close, blessed, you know, individuals in your life that you feel. And your true interaction, you know, in life and your comfort really comes when you're in the presence of a guru. When you're in the presence of some old, wise figure. And so these people are really involved in speaking and preaching of religion and spirituality and philosophy because sign of Taurus is a fixed sign, fixed belief. And Jupiter, and, and it also represents vocal, singing, or, or even um, speaking originally. 
And Jupiter here really shows somebody who may become a religious speaker, religious singer. You may be in a religious band, you know, because Jupiter represents classical music and classical art. So when you do that in Taurus, with the sign of Venus, and especially depending upon what nakshatra, it really will show what kind of a comfort and belief system you have in your life. Let's say Saturn controls your fourth house. And Saturn goes into the ninth house. What this shows is that you were separated from your mother or your mother just never nourished you due to her traveling a lot in her life or her being away from you. And you felt this lack of nourishment. But at the same time, Saturn is also blocking your access to higher privileged learning. And as much as you want to communicate and you want to learn and interact with higher studies, without the blessings of Jupiter or Mercury, who sitting, might be sitting in the ninth house, it'll really feel like a restriction in your life. It'll feel like everything that is considered to be lucky in your life is just like at a standstill. It's like you just don't get lucky. Even if you, you, you try to travel as much as possible, yet you just can't. You somehow, that part of that, your, your part of you, that, that life is kind of blocked until you're like 32, 30, or you know, if certain planetary time periods come of the 12th house, only then. Otherwise, it really feels like I'm just stuck in this place. I'm not learning much. I feel unlucky. And it's just like you then trying to force yourself to learn religion and philosophy will make your people of your home kind of like your enemy and obstacle. They're like, why are you doing this? Don't do this. Because again, Saturn is putting that restriction. Saturn is wherever Saturn sits. He is really making you work hard for it. He's like, you're not going to get this easy. You're going to get this the hard way. You're going to get this, you know, after really hours and hours of asking teachers and gurus and schools to accept you and to give you the philosophical knowledge. Till then, you might have a very ignorant mind. Till then, you know, like people who have very ignorant mind, they're like, oh, you, like they have their those deep beer drinking, NASCAR driving people like, yeah. USA. Oh, we don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm saying it. It's kind of like that mentality. Whether it's here, U.S. and in India, in any country. Uh, since I live in the U.S., that's why I'm using that. But um, you know, it's like those uh, folks. You know what I'm saying. So yeah, that's what Saturn does. But once Saturn opens up his karmic backlog after in your mid thirties, that's when you become very disciplinarian regarding law, regarding um, higher education and learning, and that becomes your source of comfort. Like you can go into law field, you can become a judge, you can go into preaching some strict discipline of religion because it took you so hard to learn them, you become very headstrong about it. That's it, this is it, this is my belief, and here it is, learn it now. So, you know, these, these people are very conservative and very strict about their religious belief, all right? So guys, this was my analysis of 4th Lord in the 9th house. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And again, if you want to know where your 4th Lord is placed and all the details and secrets of astrology in the books, check out the links here and including check out my option 6.